co-star, and over the course of shooting, all of us took a shine to it. Although there was some question of Spike's ancestry, there was no question about his own screen appeal. Lie down! With our human and animal cast complete, Mr. Disney assigned the old yellow production to director Robert Stevenson. Robert Stevenson was a veteran director of British films. His credits go back to the 1930s. He's not a name that people cite very often as one of the great directors in American film, but if you look at his credits, you can't help but be impressed because they range from Old Yeller to Mary Poppins. Now we were ready to begin filming. Several rugged ranch locales in Southern California were chosen as locations that would evoke Texas of the late 1860s. The interiors were sets built on sound stages at the Disney Studio in Burbank. The most difficult parts of Old Yeller's production were the animal fights. These dangerous-looking scenes were supervised by the American Humane Association and carefully choreographed and edited for both high drama and the safety of the animal actors. Here's Disney's sound effects expert, Wayne Allwine, to explain how this illusion is created. Hello, my name's Wayne Allwine, and I'm standing here on the sound effects stage at the Walt Disney Studios, visiting with some of my old sound friends. Did you know that a lot of the sequences you saw in Old Yellow, the outdoor action sequences, were filmed without sound being recorded? Why would this take place? Well, let's say, for instance, the, the, the bear and the dog fight. Well, number one, the bear and the dog aren't really fighting. They're really friendly animals, and they get along. They're trained not to hurt each other. But on one side of the camera, you have the bear's trainer, and on the other side of the camera, you've got the dog's trainer. And they're both yelling instructions to their animals to get together and make it look good. Well, obviously, this would all ruin the effect you were after in trying to create sound for this part of the film. So everything that you heard was recreated in post-production using these props that I have in front of me. Uh, the fire that was burning in the background. Bamboo sticks. The donkey that ran across the farmyard. <laughs> Coconut hooves. The gate that gets thrown open. Right here, a long group of old iron hinges. These were all effects and props that were used to create the action and excitement in the movie Old Yeller. Now, even the bear was fake. An old lamp chimney. Anyway, I hope you'll stick around and watch us as we recreate one of the sound effects sessions that were used in the filming of Old Yeller. See how you can take a scene that is shot silent and bring it to life using everyday props. smoothly and as usually happens on a movie set hearty fellowship and a few pranks were common there were a lot of tarantulas around there people did some awful things with dead tarantulas they put them in people's lunch and and dropped them down one guy's pants finally the most memorable dramatic scene in the whole film came along and tommy kirk had the heartbreaking task of ending yeller's suffering he did a terrific job with a tough scene no mama there's no hope for him now, Travis. He's suffering. You know we've got to do it. I know, Mama. He was my dog. I'll do it. I just played it for real. You know, you got to throw away the rule book and not act. You know, you got you can't act truth. You have to be it. You have to. You ha it has to come from the heart. And if something is phony baloney, it leaves you dry, dry-eyed and cold as a stone. But if something is real, it can move you. When it was released on Christmas Day, 1957, the critical reaction to Old Yeller was overwhelming, with critics noting the appeal of the story, its important theme, and a new maturity to Walt Disney's live-action films. 
Old Yeller won dozens of awards, and Spike won the Patsy Award from the American Humane Association. In the end, Old Yeller's most important success was his popularity with audiences. The film was one of the top five hits of the year and has continued to be popular ever since. It's hard to prepare someone for the emotional pull of Old Yeller who hasn't seen it before. You don't even have to be a dog lover to be moved by this story. Anybody who's lived through childhood can relate, and that means everybody, because it's about growing up, it's about learning hard lessons, it's about sacrifice, it's about love. It touches on the very essence of human emotion and does so beautifully. That's why you have to cry and you have to get broken up watching this story because it is honest. It's not pushing your buttons. It's not a contrivance. It earns those tears. The old Yeller will be played a thousand years from now. And uh, Dorothy and Fess and Kevin and I will be watched in theaters, I think, a thousand years from now because of Walt Disney. Even now, so many years later, and so many miles down the road, Old Yeller hasn't lost its ability to amuse, to entertain, to engross, and to touch the heart. I'm honored to be a part of a film that is now considered an enduring classic, and I hope you've enjoyed sharing some memories of it with me. So long. Old Yeller was a fighter, a rip and